it's not just me. A huge percentage of the population believes these theories too. So NASA is also associated with the moon landing being a hoax. Actors who pretend to be victims or witnesses. Where's the curve? Have you ever seen the curve of the Earth? What I'm trying to tell people is I'm the better freshman recruit. During the second half of last year, I had a series going on on my channel called Theory Busters, in which I decided, out of a pettiness, or maybe just out of thinking it would be pretty funny, to try and bust every single stupid, dumb theory that Shane Dawson has decided to broadcast on his channel to an audience of millions and millions of impressionable children. Why, you may ask? Because I always thought that this was one of the things that he has done that's quite bad and harmful but has just been constantly overlooked. And not only overlooked, but praised consistently. The guy has been for years selling merch that has something to do with these videos. I mean, he has a makeup line that's tied into them. It's an integral part of his current branding to this day. I feel like at this point, we're all very much aware of the dangers of misinformation and where exactly that can lead you to. And more specifically, the mindset that allows misinformation to enter your brain. You know, that we should listen to what some guy on the internet is telling us more than actual, real-life professionals. If you were to scroll to the comments section of any of these uh, theory videos that Shane has made a few years ago, you'd see that this man has served as a gateway to a very, very dangerous world. These kids believed everything that he had to say, and the things that he had to say were quite damaging. The scariest one we talked about was actors, which basically is actors who pretend to be victims or witnesses in like big events. Now I'll be honest, in my head I thought that I have essentially retired this series. I mean, I thought that Shane was done as well. It seems like YouTube has really been cracking down on these sort of theory videos and content to do with like misinformation and all that. Also, a few months ago, this guy went on like a full-on rampage and deleted like 50 of these sort of videos. Coincidentally, around the same time that I started my series. So, I guess you could say that uh, I'm a very impactful YouTuber. I'm a very, very, very influential YouTuber. This definitely is, is an action that has something to do with me. Psych, just kidding. Uh, as I was working on this video that was un fully unrelated to Shane about like, uh, you know, the whole history of theories on YouTube and how YouTube decided to kind of shut that down and the effect of that. Um, Shane has decided to unretire his series. He made a comeback, making a whole 47 minute long thing out of it where he brings in his like flat earther brother and asks him a bunch of questions about living in a simulation. It's, it's wild. It's a wild video, I'll tell you that much. And the Inkies, once they realized that they're nothing but a slave race, they revolted against the Anunnaki. And the Anunnaki wiped them all out. Pretty much just slaughtered them. So you know what? I figured if Shane's doing a comeback, I'm doing one as well, baby. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you back to the very last episode of Theory Busters, where today, uh, we're we're gonna be we're, we're gonna be talking about some crazy ass some some crazy ass shit over here on this channel. For some reason, even though it's 2021, we're gonna be discussing the shape of the Earth. We are not on a ball. We're not on a sphere. We're on something that's flat. A flat plane. A planet. Right, it's just the word plane with a T. And what is it? Is it a is it a triangle? I don't know. Uh, let's let's find out. We're gonna try and figure out what's the deal with Shane Dawson's brother and why is he brought in as an expert to multiple of these theory videos? What makes him an expert? Is it literally just the fact that he's his brother? I don't know. <laughs> Probably. He revolted against the Anunnaki. And also, we're gonna be talking about this guy. He may seem just like a normal dude, but actually. He's quite important for this video. My name is Mark Kendall Sargent, and I'm a flat earther. But first, I want to kind of discuss the impact that these videos have. These theory videos from 2015 to like 2018, 19. A video kept popping up, and it had a picture of a boat going over water. And I clicked on that video, and my life changed forever. Something that's kind of hard to ignore is just the sheer amount of views that these videos tend to get. At their peak, some of these videos managed to get tens of millions of views, which in turn translated to millions and millions of dollars. It translated to a mansion, a makeup line, a massive ranch. Uh, why do rich Americans always need to buy a ranch? 
I don't know. And here's the thing, when someone does that well on YouTube, it's essentially like a massive beacon for all the copycats to assemble. I mean, you've probably noticed the amount of people in the last three years who took note of Mr. Beast's success and started making videos where they're saying shit like, Ah, oh, what up, Pine Nation? Before this video starts, make sure you smash that like button. Click it, click it a billion times, but ma make sure that it's actually subscribed at the end. Today, I'm gonna be taking this stack of $2,000 and wipe my ass with it on camera. Might be your monthly salary, I don't care. I'm wiping my ass with it, baby. Same thing essentially happened here. Shane didn't invent the concept of making videos about theories that he found online, but he did make it so it's insanely popular to do so. Because if a guy can get 40 million views off a theory video, there's still a pretty solid room for you to make a nice little, nice little milli. And I vividly remember that at the time between like 2014 to like, I don't know, 2019, 2018, that stuff was spreading around the internet like wildfire. If you were on YouTube, it was pretty hard to miss that kind of stuff. You'd watch one video that would lead you down another one and another one, all the while these YouTubers were making absolute bank off of the misinformation of sometimes very young people. When you're at a young age, you're very impressionable, you're stupid as hell, your brain is still developing, and you know, you go through YouTube and you see this a mysterious thumbnail by some YouTuber, and everything seems so eye-catching and colorful. It's literally made for babies to click on. I remember seeing comments under some of these theory videos of kids detailing exactly how they just finished arguing with their mother or their teacher or whatever about, you know, whether this thing that Shane said in his video is true or not. My personal experience with that kind of stuff was actually quite different because as a kid, I used to watch Mythbusters all the time, and they always told me not to listen to, to stuff that these kind of people tell online. But one day, as a teenager, I vividly remember scrolling through YouTube and seeing this video recommended to me, this absolutely bonkers video. It was a video trying to claim with uh, facts and logic that Eminem was in fact replaced by a clone. Will the real Slim Shady please stand up? Nope, he's dead apparently, from drugs. Through a little bit of digging, I found this video that's more or less the same, just with a lot less views. You gotta have that movie editor uh, trial version on, on screen. That's it, that's it, you know, it's a good video. Wait, he just got older. <laughs> he's, he's like 20 years older in the second pictures. Obviously, he's gonna look different. The, the difference between picture one and picture two is like more or less my age, my, my like my whole existence. This is, this is dumb as hell. With the way that the YouTube algorithm was built at the time, the second I watched that video, it essentially dropped me down this insane rabbit hole where every video just gets more and more crazier than the last one and more, I'd say, dangerous as well. There was a moment when I fully decided to shut down my laptop and call it a day and that was when I found myself watching a video uh, explaining exactly how Jewish people, me, I'm, I'm, I'm Jewish, it's, it's an ethno religion, born Jewish, I'm not religious. They were explaining exactly how my people, my family members, um, were essentially controlling the world. And, and somehow I wasn't even let in on the whole thing. Would it really be insane to think that a Shane video from at the time would lead you down the same path? Um... I don't really think so very much. But what if throughout our whole lives, they were putting it in movies? An organically bioengineered microchip be sewn into the skin. Putting it on TV. I'm gonna implant your career chip. Theories of a diabolical group of people who controls the media and anti-Semitism essentially go hand in hand like me and tweets saying I f James Marriott. You can't really ignore that the connection is there. Now, since this is the series finale and all, I want to go over some of the worst things that Shane has ever said during his theory videos. Why? Because every time I post one of these videos, I get a shit ton of comments of people saying, or, that's my actual name by the way, or, o double r ah, oh, come on man, this is just an insulated incident. Shane hasn't repeatedly tried to convince his children audience of all this dangerous stuff happening. Oh, definitely, definitely not. People say that because they have the memory of a fucking goldfish. And it's not just me, a huge percentage of the population believes these theories too. Shane has a video that I had a very hard time of finding. Can't find it to this day, I don't know if it's been taken down 
or if YouTube is doing a very good job of hiding it from my eyes. But he had a video about the concept of actors being paid by news organizations, by the media, to pretend that they actually went through some horrible, tragic events. And the scariest one we talked about was crisis actors, which basically is actors who pretend to be victims or witnesses in like big events. And you see them on the news talking about like what they saw and like, oh, it was so scary. But then you'll see them a week later in a wig and glasses being somebody else. And that might actually be the most damaging one out of all of them because in reality world where we actually live in and we don't, um, use Alex Jones as their source of information, these people that Shane claims might be actors are actual, like, victims, you know? They're actual human beings that went through some of the worst things that anyone could imagine going through. And here is Shane throwing his audience of millions and millions of people right at them to completely delegitimize their experiences. A person went through something that's so unbelievably horrible and they decide to share their experiences with other people uh, just to have some guy send his army of of toddlers to harass them that's just awful i've never seen him apologize for spreading this sort of stuff around uh who knows if he even cares huh the the empath oh no pine lee you forgot he put a one second disclaimer before the video claiming that everything that he says might be bullshit. So I guess I guess that makes everything okay. I guess I guess everything is a-okay after you put that one second disclaimer, huh? Yeah, you know what? That disclaimer is worth jack shit because almost always a few minutes into the video, Shane can't help himself. He can't resist throwing out that he himself does actually believe in all this stuff. I think the New York Times really said it best. In 2016, he wondered out loud if the first Apollo moon landing was staged by NASA. It's a theory, he said, but I mean, all the evidence is not looking good. Yeah, if you want to see what kind of bullshit evidence he gave, uh, feel free to watch my video about it. It's all dumb. It's all unbelievably stupid and dumb. He discussed the false theory that the attacks of September were a hoax. I know it's crazy, he said, but just look at some of these videos. It's crazy, but just look at some of these videos. And last year, he devoted a segment of a video to Flat Earth Theory, which he concluded kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense. Yeah, guys, at the end of the day, it kind of makes sense. For his Flat Shape of the Earth video, he got the exact same expert that he got for his brand new video. And uh, by expert, I mean his brother. It's literally just his brother. So in the Bible, it talks about the sea, there's the sky, there's the firmament. What the firmament is, is a dome. It says that in the Bible. Yeah, there's a firmament. So the dome shaped, the heavens are above it. And then it talks about how the earth expands to its four corners. Can you not see that this guy shouldn't be on camera giving information out to people? I mean, it seems pretty obvious to me. Well, <laughs> not as obvious as you needing to get today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. Hey class, it's me, your teacher. Um, you know what? Let's let's throw this textbook out of the window. Today, I'm going to teach you something that's actually cool for once. Hell yeah, teach. You're the best. Yeah, it's me. I'm the cool teacher. That's what I do. Something that a lot of people don't know is that streaming services have different prices across different countries. You, my largely American audience, may be paying $8 a month for your Disney Plus subscription. But if you click on the link in the description, get Atlas VPN and change your location to India, you can now pay a lovely four dollars a month instead pretty sweet huh atlas vpn protects all your devices across the exact same subscription which i'd say is pretty sick it lets you access content that may not be available in your region and it blocks all malicious links ads and trackers and lets you know when some evil evil character is trying to steal your data all for himself right now atlas vpn is running a huge discount it means you can get a three-year subscription for just 199 a month with a full 30-day money-back guarantee Quite a no-brainer if you ask me. But quick, time is running out. So make sure you get your deal by clicking the link in the description below. Uh, thank you, Atlas VPN. Anyways, um, let's talk about Shane's video about the shape of the Earth. Antarctica, which is in the very south, is an ice wall that's around all of the continents. In June 2018, Shane Dawson released a very popular video titled 
uh, mind-blowing conspiracy theories where he talks about a variety of different theories that he probably found on Reddit. I'd say that this whole video essentially builds up to this peak moment, this, this zenith. I don't know if uh, that's what that word means or if that's how you say it, but feel free to correct me in the comments as you usually do. It builds up to this moment where Shane finally sits down with his brother to give him an interview where he's gonna give his piece about his thoughts and feelings about the shape of the earth. I was honestly a, a bit flabbergasted by that moment. I mean, why him? Is it literally, is he just Shane's brother? Is that all it is? Is that all it takes to be on camera and just give your expertise about a subject? Just to be a, another person's sibling? Well, according to one of those weird wiki pages, Jared Yaw, Shane Yaw's brother, is apparently an underground hip-hop artist and owner of the Language Arts Clothing Company. Because of Shane's popularity, both of his brothers, Jared Yaw and Jacob Yaw, also get the limelight. It's the perk of having celebrated family members. But yeah, no, he's, he's literally just a rapper. So instead of us being able to go around the world, it's all enclosed by Antarctica's ice wall. So the United Nations map is actually the flat earth map model. They have actual borders around this, and then you see all the continents spread out. So if this was a globe, they spread it out like this. So that's the model that they believe, and there's an Arctic ice wall around it. This guy is like the complete opposite of an expert. You talk to him, and knowledge somehow manages to, to, to drift away from your brain. I mean, th th this guy, nothing that he says makes any sort of sense whatsoever. It's, it's all gibberish. The Earth expands to its four corners. So that also would make you feel like there could be a flat shape to it. When Shane decides to ask Jared whether he actually believes in all this crap that he's spewing out or not, Jared says very, um, very wisely, may I add, that he is open to both schools of thought about the shape of the Earth. Well, you're saying they, so you don't believe it? Um, I'm open to the idea. I don't know, for me at least, it's hard for me to pinpoint what I believe. So I'm open to both. What the hell does that mean that you're open to both ideas? That's dumb. That's, that's stupid. That's a stupid ass dumb mindset. You may think that it makes you seem all smart and stuff, but no, it's actually stupid in my opinion. Let's say I'm holding this shirt. On one side, there's a guy with a good solid set of eyeballs and he says, or oh, you're holding a shirt right now. This is what you're doing. You're holding a shirt right now. On my other side, I have my nine year old brother. He's not even looking at me. He's like playing Fortnite. And he's all like wacky and random. He loves saying all this wacky and random stuff. He says, or you're just holding a bunch of poop in your hands right now. There's, there's a bunch of poop in your hands. Your hands are covered in feces. Who the hell should I listen to in that moment? The person who clearly knows better about what's going on or my nine year old brother? Would I be a genius if I said that I should listen to my brother who says I'm holding a bunch of poop in my hands right now? No, because he clearly doesn't know what's actually going on, nor does he care if he actually learned the truth. All the information that we get about the Earth, about space, the moon, and all these things comes from NASA. Every picture that you've ever seen is given to you by NASA. All the information about like space and Earth comes to us from NASA? That That's like the most American thing you can say. There, there aren't any, any other space agencies. You, you American? You're, you're not the only guys out there, you silly little goose. So NASA is also associated with the moon landing being a hoax. One small step for man. When these guys say shit like, oh, oh we can't trust NASA telling us the Earth is round because oh, they were also behind the moon landing and that, that was a hoax as well. You realize that there's no helping with these people. They're, they're completely beyond saving. I mean, they do... The, the, just the complete opposite of what science does, whereas science takes one piece of information as a building block to reach more information and just build more knowledge for the human race as a whole, these two jokers sit on the couch and just use one wrong piece of information as a building block to reach another wrong piece of information, and now they just know less, but they think they know more, so... Maybe that's what matters at the end of the day, hey? <laughs> the, the illusion of knowledge. Well, and even so, the moon landing is one of those things where, like, maybe 20 years ago, everybody thought, oh, that's stupid, that's crazy. But now, 
I feel like kind of everybody's down for the Moon Landing meme fan. This is a video with 40 million views where Shane Dawson repeats again and again and again that it's just common knowledge, just common way of thinking that the moon landing was a prank. Do you not think that if it was a hoax or a prank, the Soviet Union would essentially, you know, decide to kind of expose that into the public? Well, I guess not, because according to them, I mean, all the information about space comes from NASA. So, how would they even know anything? All the information that we get about the Earth, about space, the moon, and all these things comes from NASA. There's this one bit that I found really annoying where Jared just kind of sits there and spits out one fact after the other. All of them are very kind of detached from reality and not really based on any actual information. We're at the point now where they put little machines in your house to basically do everything for you. Where you have phones yeah, listening on everything like to weed, tell you things like mushrooms. They expand your mind and they really put you into the universe and it the puts you into the universe. treaty sign. What life is about. All the major right. countries of power. To not let anybody go into Antarctica. It kind of reminded me of this debate tactic called Gish Gallop, where a person essentially dumps an outrageous amount of arguments with no actual regards to the accuracy of what they're saying. It doesn't really matter if a lot of what Jared is saying is filled with half truths, uh, misrepresentations of actual things that happened, or just straight up lies, because he just spits it out so fast, you don't really have enough time to catch that. It leads to a situation where instead of him doing all the dirty work himself, it now puts on the pressure on me to do all the research and fact checking, you know, all the stuff that he probably should have done from the get go. In this section to do with the curvature of the earth, I had an especially bad time trying to figure out what this dude is even talking about. I, I was honestly pretty confused. Where's the curve? Have you ever seen the curve of the earth? I mean, they say, well, in an airplane you could see it, but I can't see it. Yeah. You're at six feet tall, I can see about three miles ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And I can see about 20 miles in the panoramic setting. If I'm 10,000 feet up, more than a thousand times taller than what I am, shouldn't I be able to see about a thousand times more at, at minimum? I mean, the earth is only 24, thousand miles around I should be able to see some kind of a curve so to get some clearance on that matter I decided to send it to a friend of mine who's starting a PhD in astrophysics next year and even she really really struggled to understand what the hell is this guy even talking about he says I'm six foot tall so I can see about five kilometers and the graphic shows that it's in front of him then he says I can see about 20 kilometers in a panoramic setting but he hasn't gotten any taller so I don't understand what he means by that at all. Then he says at about 1000 times taller, I should be able to see about 1000 times more. Hard to say that anything that he says is wrong because he's really vague and I don't know what he means by the amount that you can see. Is he talking about distance along the horizon or distance from the horizon to him? Frankly, I'm bamboozled. People who believe in these sort of theories love to claim that they are just open-minded. Yeah, baby. My mind is so open, ah, I just, I just let anything up in there, in my brain. That's just not true. These sort of people, Shane, very much included, choose at every turn to close their minds to actual, you know, real life facts, just to open it up to all this stuff that seems like something that you'd see in a TV show. So many things that he says in these videos, that are just so easily debunkable, like just, they're just there but he actively chooses not to do that. In his uh, Pita Bread Earth video, we see a prime example for that. Shane brings up that one time Elon Musk shot a Tesla into space and brought footage of it into Earth, showing it isn't, in fact, all that flat. But because that's logical and comes in direct conflict with this dumb preconceived notion that he's trying to push, he makes sure to mention this thing, which he knows has been debunked. Where it kind of looks like a green screen, you see the Earth behind the car, and then it's a studio and it's, it's back. Now that's been debunked. He knows it, he mentions it as well, but that doesn't matter because in an instant after that, he just brushes it off and moves along. Now that's been debunked, but it is weird that that happened. I feel like by watching these videos, I essentially undo everything that school has done for me. Uh, there's one point <laughs> where they're doubting the existence of gravity. I, I don't know. Right, and then Einstein thought of the theory of gravity, which is just a theory. You have the Big Bang Theory. Nothing is off limits to these guys. What do they think? What's, what's preventing us from floating into space? Is it just our willpower? Is that it? What does this edit even mean? Theory is a, is a system of ideas? 
yeah, man, no shit. But, you know, there are some systems of ideas that are more based in reality that, than what you're doing right now. He's trying to put gravity on the same level as what they're doing at that moment. As if, like, Einstein was sitting around with his friends on a beanbag, <laughs> smoking a doobie, being all like, Man, but what about gravity? That could be a thing, right? His brand new video is unintentionally one of the funniest things I've seen my whole life. It's everything that was wild to me about the last one, but just taken up to the extreme. So Jared is back in town again, sitting on that goddamn couch. Ooh, we love that, some couch sitting action. Once again, classic. What this video chooses to focus on is the classic theory that we're all living in a simulation. Now, um, you may think of me as a theory hater, but actually, this is one that I actually kind of like. I think that this is a very interesting thought experiment all in all. Talking about this one, you can have a pretty interesting discussion about the ramifications of living in a simulation. Uh, what does that mean, essentially? What world would we have to live in to lead to this kind of simulation existing? I don't know, it's pretty fascinating stuff in my opinion. But the thing that makes this video in particular really funny to me is the fact that Shane keeps on asking his brother these overly specific questions about this theory, like really, really going into details as if there is this kind of absolute answer to this question. Is it everybody's simulation or is it per person? Like, am I in my own simulation and all you guys are NPCs? Is that what it is? I don't believe so. Okay. I believe that we are in a mass group simulation. And my personal belief is we all share a collective consciousness. He's given away all these details as if this is less of a theory than gravity. Like, this is all... Just, just common knowledge. Everyone knows this stuff is going on. Something that I found pretty interesting is the dynamic between Shane and his brother, and specifically about the different ways in which they choose to explain things. Don't get me wrong, both of them give explanations that can be as silly as the others at times, but at least Jared uh, gives off the facade of like, you know, science being behind what he says. And sometimes it's not even a facade. Sometimes the things that he says are actually quite logical. Whereas Shane... I mean, even like Instagram. I was looking on Instagram filters, and some of them are created by kids, and they're so in-depth and crazy, and like putting things on your face and get, putting monsters like, you know, and I'm... There's something really funny to me about the thought of Shane Dawson sitting in his room being all like, Hey, husband. I forgot his name. Sorry, husband. Ryland, that's his name. Sorry, Ryland. I'll come down for dinner in just a few seconds. Ah, I just need to get some important research done for my video. I just, I just need to finish this thing. We're all tapped into the same simulation. That's why you enter a room and you feel energy. We've all asked the universe for a sign, you know? Give me a sign. Once you accept a sign that the universe gives you, you speak universe now. Everything is a sign and you live synergistically with the universe. I always thought that there was a very clear similarity between a certain type of like religious people and the mentality of people who chose to devote their lives to believing in these sort of theories. And I don't think I'll ever get a better example for that than this video. Right, so there has to be a creator. There has to be the ultimate programmer behind this. There has to be rules. Even though it's all based on this very sciencey kind of thought process, it comes down to the same thing, to the same kind of belief that we're all put here for a reason and that we're all put here by some kind of almighty being. I think the more people that accept, whether it's a simulation or we're in, in, a, in a world where we're being controlled and they're over it, the better. Because that means that we could actually join forces and we can live the existence that was intended for us. I'm not dissing that thought process, by the way, the religion-based one or the simulation-based one. I just find it very interesting, especially after checking out Jared's channel. I saw a section in a video where he talks about his life story and his connection to religion, and everything just fits with that so well. He states in a video that he has grown up a lot of his life as a Christian, being taught that this was the only way of life. And then when he became older and started to doubt religion and the systems that is built upon, he started turning into the theory community. Like most people, I grew up in a religious household. I actually went to a Catholic school, went to church every Sunday. And I really didn't question anything I was taught. I mean, once you realize that everything you've been taught is 
not a universal truth, you feel lost. You start to mistrust almost everything. This need to find a higher, deeper meaning in life, this need that I think that a lot of people can connect to, it's very, very human. Because what's happening here at the end of the day, really? I mean, he's just substituting God, an almighty creator, to an almighty programmer. Instead of going to an afterlife when you die, you go to base reality. Jared is showcasing something that's inherently very human, and I find that pretty fascinating. All of a sudden we have purpose. Think about if the moon knew your name. After that though, he explains exactly what he means by this sort of creator, programmer type of guy. And um, th that's when things go really, really bonkers. I. I've done a lot of research. Early cavemen, they drew Orion. And a lot of us are familiar with Orion's belt, the constellation. There's three very prominent stars in the sky, but the whole constellation depicts a hunter, Orion the hunter. So what would motivate cavemen to paint something on their walls? Um, it's probably an homage to their creator, I would imagine. And the creator even taught them how to hunt because if you look up at Orion, it looks like somebody hunting with a bow and arrow. Uh, okay, so yeah, according to Jared's very specific answer, cavemen used to draw a hunter on the cave wall, which ma makes sense. I mean, that's something that they used to do. They used to do hunting. No, that's, that's not the reason. It makes sense because Orion, the creator, the programmer, the creator of the universe, um, the, the hunter, he taught them how to hunt. How do we know that? Um, because when these guys looked up into the sky, they saw Orion's belt, which was a bigger part of a constellation that shows a hunter. Yes. Whoa, and that's crazy. That makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, nope, it doesn't. We decide how to connect the stars in the sky. C constellations aren't like a inherent thing that like stars don't have an inherent connection between them some of them have like blown up and died i've done a lot of research people knew what a hunter is makes sense i mean humanity needed food so screw it let's connect a bunch of stars make it look like a hunter that's pretty badass fun fact lots of different ancient cultures have made their own constellations with their very own shapes and names and stars that are connected to help them navigate around. Let's just say that Orion is the ultimate programmer. He's the coder, the ultimate creator. He gave us a lot of clues and it's really up to us to figure these things out, right? Oh, oh, he gave us lots of clues. Oh, I guess, I guess that throws my whole argument out of the window. What clues? What are you talking about exactly? In Mexico, the Teotihuacan, at one point it was a city that housed about 170,000 people, another area where they had three pyramids. And if you look it up, and I can actually show you, the layout of this town of Teotihuacan matches pretty much exactly to what a motherboard on a computer looks what? like. What? I'm gonna go insane. I'm, I'm legit, I'm gonna go insane. This is it. I'm gonna go. There doesn't have to be a specific like way that a motherboard looks like from what i understand at least i'm not much of a computer guy but you can put like the chips wherever you want right i think i think that's true computer people please let me know in the comments if i'm right but i think i'm right i'm pretty sure i'm right the little chips can be placed in any which way so if you want to make it look like those pyramids you could i mean no one's actually stopping you it's like me taking a <laughs> A drawing of the pyramids and being like, whoa, everybody, uh, this drawing of the pyramids suspiciously looks like the pyramids themselves. It's because someone probably wanted it to, to look that way and made it be that way. I mean, that's it. Simple as that. Stop with the dramatic thud effects. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scream if I hear another one. If you take the measurements of the Great Pyramid of Giza and you take the perimeter and you times it by the same number that you would times the height by, you can get the land mass and the total circumference of the Earth. So, Shane Dawson, the type of dude to watch an Illuminati confirmed video from like 10 years ago and be like, yeah, wow, this is pretty legit stuff. That seems pretty legit right here. Now, to make it clear, I do not think that simulation theory is like a ridiculous thing. I think that, I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense. Lots of people who are way smarter than me or Jared have talked about it and how it's a very real possibility and I find it quite interesting. But, you know, I just can't take this shit seriously. Like, the way they specifically talk about it, 
It's just, it's just funny. I mean, that's it. Like, at one point, I was watching the video, and I fully found myself zoning out. And then, when I tune back in, this is what they're talking about. There's a tenth planet in our solar system called Nibiru, where a species called the Anunnaki lived. And so every 1,200 years, years, another race orbit from that passes a neighboring planet of theirs called the Inkies. So they took the Inkies, but they started noticing the that the Inkies were getting race. pretty smart. They revolted against the Anunnaki, and the Anunnaki wiped them all out. Pretty much just slaughtered them, and that's when the theory comes in they had what to the? treat it. Shane's brother actually made his very own video about the Flat Earth community about three years ago. During it, he decides to go to a meeting of these guys and see what they're all about. He meets up with this guy called Mark Sargent. Now you may ask yourself, who the hell even is Mark Sargent? 2015, this guy, Mark Sargent, posted his flat earth clues. You're kind of the like father of this oh movement. How, how would you? If flat earth is a university, you know, FEA, then I would be the freshman recruiter. According to critics, his YouTube videos have greatly accelerated the popularization of modern flat earth belief. Wow, this, this guy is doing loads of good stuff, huh? Popularizing all this dumbass shit. And then I started watching the videos that are like, you know, here's 10 proofs and the really cool edit shots and all that. You see the high altitude photos and the high altitude videos. Um, and you know, it looks flat. You have long distance photography where they can take pictures of mountains from like hundreds of miles away that in essence on a ball, you shouldn't be able to see. It's a very, very big ball. It's huge. It's a huge ball, right? So you're just like a tiny little speck of dust on it even smaller it, it what do you expect would that be enough like if you saw like a just a huge dip just if you stood there you saw a huge dip a comically huge dip when jared arrives at the meetup there were actually a few things that i couldn't help but notice first of all there were two people there that drove all the way to pasadena who said that what made them start believing in all this stuff was a video they got recommended to them on youtube a video kept popping up and it had a picture of a boat going over water. I thought it was gonna be a joke and I ignored it and then eventually I was so bored I clicked on it. There was a suggested video on YouTube and that video was called Flat Earth Clues by Mark K. Sargent. And I clicked on that video and my life changed forever. Two different people, two, two drove all the way over there. One of them, the second one, has devoted her entire life to spreading around this stupid lie. Makes you wonder how much fault does YouTube bear in this situation for changing people's life like that? Definitely for the worst, in my opinion. Uh, yes, YouTube made some heavy changes to their website that essentially makes it very difficult for this sort of thing to happen now, uh, but the damage is already done. YouTube and YouTubers who spread this sort of stuff as well are kind of responsible for that, in my opinion. I don't believe in evolution anymore. In the video, uh, Jared presents these stories of how these people joined the flat gang community in an almost inspirational light. He puts in the background all this inspirational music. I find the music to be quite creepy. I, I feel like I'm watching a promotional video for a cult. Impact your perception of reality? Did it impact religious beliefs that you maybe had? I feel more special, more significant. Um, I don't believe in evolution anymore. That's uh, a huge lie in itself. A lot of these people are now full on alienated from their families because of this, well, cult. I mean, I, I feel pretty comfortable calling it a cult by now. All their friends won't talk to them anymore because they think they're crazy, but, you know, I, I guess that's fine because they get to still believe in this thing that's not actually happening. That's. That, that's inspirational, I guess. What's the kind of reaction you get from your social circle once you accepted this? First started out talking to my family, and me and my brothers got into a few arguments about it, and uh, never really resolved, they just kind of dropped it as I started talking to more and more people around me. And yeah, at this point, I, I'll bring it up with like every lift I take. Most of my family thinks I'm crazy. This is so creepy. This is, uh, this is horrible, but it's also an incredible showcase of everything that I talked about in this video. So, uh, thank you so much, Jared. And I just did a little bit of research into that, and I realized that the sun sets due to perspective, and then it goes beyond a distance where its throw of light can no longer reach us, and it gets eclipsed. This video, this documentary, does an incredible job at documenting exactly where these cute little theory videos for kids can lead you to. A fucking five-hour drive to Pasadena where you go there, 
uh, because that's the only place where we find people who are as out of it as you are. It's easy to sit there and laugh at these people, but in reality, I mean, the, these folks must be so, so unbelievably lonely. They're so sure that this thing that they believe in is true that they've just been full-on isolated from everyone else. They've been led to believe that everyone is against them. And that isolation, in turn, leads to them only talking to other people who are as brainwashed as them. Jared mentions that something that they were really afraid of before I arrived is that he would actually be some sort of uh, an infiltrator, a person with bad intents coming in to just film their secret little creepy community and post that out into the public to ridicule them. There's a lot of um, people worrying about like infiltration or outsiders coming in and they're they're worried about people's motives. You know, same way that a cult might be afraid of that, perhaps. He says that one of the things that he appreciates the most about this society is uh, the, the sense of community that they have going on and the ideology that's behind what they're doing, uh, not even the shape of the earth itself. But yeah, the video really paints this lovely sense of community and this group of people that's just there for each other all the time. Talking to these people, it rejuvenates a sense of spirituality. It gives them a sense of awakening into their perspective. And there's not a lot of negative you can say about that. And that really made me think of this all gas, no breaks video that I watched a few years ago, where he goes into an actual flat gang convention. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, but I think the dude that I mentioned at the beginning, Mark Sargent, I think he might have been involved in that convention and like organizing it and stuff. Now Andrew Callahan over here is a very smart guy, so what he does mainly is go to these people and he asks them this very, very simple question. Who's doing the lying? 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 The simplicity of that question is absolutely genius because I feel like it leaves so much lovely room for the interviewee to say exactly what's on their mind. So let's see what kind of answer do these people give. Let's see this sense of community that Jared was talking about. Let's see where do you really go at the end of this rabbit hole? Who's doing the lying? Some some gravelers, you know. Uh, most Jewish people are just... It's all mind control. You got a Kimmel, and you got a Fallon, and I think both of those are Jewish back names. The Jews are in fucking... Yeah, they freaking control all the, of everything. They're the scariest people I've met. Really? really? In what way? Dude, that, that shit's all about Jews. There's not a lot of negative you can say about that. Wow. Um, I don't really have much to say other than that. Uh subscribe